cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. Oh, it was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day. Yes. Amen. We're ready for prayer. Now I need the Offer up the praise. 
read it. I don't got to know this song, but I found a friend who is all to me, and his love is ever true. How I love to tell how he lived at me, and what his grace can do for you. Well, I'm saved by his glory divine. I'm saved through new life sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete. For I'm saved, saved, saved. Amen. I just love those old hymns. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And today we're talking on I'm hooked. Amen. I'm hooked on souls. I'm hooked. Amen. I'm hooked on Jesus. I'm hooked on the word of God. I'm hooked on Jesus. Amen. I love to talk about the goodness of Jesus. Amen. Where's Elder Nolan? Can somebody go get Elder Nolan? Amen. He's not there alone. No, he had a phone call from the hospital. Oh, sure enough. Okay. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We just want to be on one accord on today. Yes, Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes. Saying the same thing, believing in right, the same thing. Amen. How many know that God wants us to be on with one accord? Amen. 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 Praise God. So we thank God. I want to talk today from the message of I am hooked on Jesus. First start out with a, a thought, a pattern that we know that psychologists today explain how and why people change when around other people. Oh it's called social psychology. Okay. Which studies how people influence each other and how social situations can affect one's be behavior. Uh, people's behavior can change when they are around other people, which psychologists call social facilitation. Okay. And if you're around a certain group of people, I don't know her, I don't know him, amen. And people often act based on how others around them act. So if they're smiling, then you smile. If you don't smile, I won't smile. <laughs> and so this happens when uh, uh, people, which is called the normalization, they follow what is the norm. Uh -huh. This can be a positive way or a negative way. The way it affects them can be positive or negative. And also, people's opinion may intensify when they join a certain group right. with similar opinions. So our group is the red group. We believe in this, everything is, should be red. Well, this is the blue group. We believe everything should be blue. Don't you dare turn red because you're in the blue group. Amen. And so then leaders can have a significant impact on whether a group supports a positive or negative behavior. So we want to support a positive behavior. Yeah. Amen. And a positive behavior comes about, amen, by following Jesus. It's not by what group we're part of, but because we're following him. We're following Jesus Christ. So no matter whether you for me or against me, it's not going to change my behavior. Right. I'm going to still love you in the Lord. Amen. amen. Like we say, I love you with the love of the Lord, whether you love me or not. Amen. We're going to love one another in the Lord. Amen. And another, so I'm so glad that Jesus, most of all, never changes. Hallelujah. He don't act any different whether you change or man, or whether you around me or not. He is the same. Amen. I've noticed that through the years from growing up, I've seen friends that, amen, the first time they, they come around me and it's just me and them, they all hope, hope and dory, or what's called happy, joy, lucky, whatever you say. And then as soon as other people come around their company, they don't hello. say, they don't hello. smile, they don't say hello, right. they don't want to greet you because their other friends are around. Okay. And so that's why we're talking about I'm hooked on Jesus. Yes. And when I go through the word of today, you're going to find out how much Jesus never changes. Never. He never changed. I'm reminded by the story in the book of John. Let's go to the book of John. The 20th chapter, St. John 20th, hallelujah. I wanted to get our mind on Jesus because it's not about social groups. Some people call them cliques. It's not about social cliques. It's not about who you know. It's about him, Jesus. Amen. Just Jesus. Amen. The book of John, I wish you find your scripture, the 20th chapter. 
in all the books of the of the New Testament, John is my favorite. I love the book of John. Amen. Or I, John. Amen. If we can stand for the reading of the word. John 20, verse 15 through 17. And the scripture says, Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Yes. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. So whether the angel said, Mary, why weepest thou? Jesus wanted his word to be heard. Yes. His words were more important than those angels. He said, Mary, why weepest thou? And this is what you see in the scripture that the angels ask her the same question. But it's more important when a person that is the, the main person in your life, the focused person in your life, who is Jesus, says those important words. Anybody on the street, a stranger can say, why are you crying? crying? It's not going to minister to you like when Jesus asks, right. why are you crying? Right. Or if your mother says, why are you crying? And that, it's important because it shows caring. It shows that you care about somebody. And right here we see that Jesus wanted to let her know that he cares about her. And that, that's why you can say, I am booked on Jesus right. because he never changes. Oh, First example, he never changes. Amen. I don't care if it's a band of angels and say, why are you crying? It means more to you if one just Jesus tells you right. why you're crying. Amen. That's big brother, big daddy, whoever you want to call him. He's Jesus. Amen. And then the next person after Mary Magdalene, because Mary, amen, who, anybody, now we all know who Mary Magdalene was. Mary Magdalene was the one, amen, that Jesus had to cast out seven demons. Amen. amen. So let's go to the book of Luke. Amen. The book of Luke, the eighth chapter. Amen. Eight and three. Eight and three. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it says here, I'll wait till you get it. Amen. The third verse. And Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod, steward, and Susanna, and many others which ministered unto him of their substance. They ministered unto Jesus out of their substance. You know, there's people when we have, like I said, we had our last week when uh, we have prophets come to town or, or whoever, and we want to bless that preacher that's coming to our city. Well, then it's a usually we get to we get on the phone and we say, Sister Bobo, can you help us with some? Um, he, he he needs dinner. Can we make some soup for the preacher and some bread? Sister, you good? Sister. Again, you good with the salad. Hey, Amen. We all pitch in and make something for the preacher. So we're going to show hospitality. Amen. And here is an example of what we're talking about here. Amen. The women of God. Oh, Shavno. When Jesus came to town, it says it was Joanna, the wife of Chooser, uh, Herod Stewart, and Susanna, and many others, which ministered unto him out of their substance. Now, they didn't have to do it. Nobody told them to take care of the preacher. Oh, glory to God. Nobody said take care of the man of God. Nobody said take care of the woman of God. But because he shows you the love of God, it constrains you. Oh, shadow. Because he's giving us his spiritual. The Bible tells us, amen. And Christians, we got to give them our natural, amen. Amen. And so they, so they said, we're going to go in our pocket. We're going to make him some stew. We're going to make him a place to lay his head. We're going to make him a place. We're going to clean his clothes, praise the Lord. That, and they don't have to clean us like we have now. So we're going to wash them ourselves. Amen. And do what we're going to do for the man or the woman of God. Hallelujah. That's because they're hooked on Jesus. Oh, shut up, my God. Every prophet that comes to town, we don't take care of. 
Amen. Amen. There's only one. Hallelujah. For one but certain one. And that was Jesus. Amen. I want to point and put your mind on Jesus. And next person of character. Amen. That loves Jesus. And not just, amen, those. But if you go with me to the book of Luke. But stay there where you are. And the name is already mentioned. And that would be the name Susanna. Thirdly. Susanna. If you read that same third verse of that text scripture, it says, and, and it was not only Joanna, wife of Chusa, her hair is steward, and then it says, and Susanna, amen, also was part of that group that prepared a meal, prepared vittles, victuals, or prepared, amen, a place for him to lay his head. That's what we read about uh, in the um, Old Testament, in the book of Kings, amen, about the woman that was a Shunammite, amen. She said she prepared a room, amen, when a uh, Elijah, hallelujah, Elisha came around, hallelujah, it's all through the Bible, you can read it for yourself, and then where God's people always took care of the men and the women of God, amen, and something about you know that you're going to be blessed, hallelujah, because you took care of the men and the women of God, whoever the prophet is or the pastor, whoever it is, you took care of them, amen, so I'm hooked on Jesus, but that's the person we're talking about, is Jesus, amen, and I want to go forward with this, amen, in the, in you know, you can let them know if they want to switch. Amen. They ain't got to stay out there all day. Amen. Praise God. And Mary of Bethany. Now, she's found, amen, in Luke, the 10th chapter. Luke, the 10th chapter, verses 38. Luke 10 and 38. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You know, we got to use wisdom in all that we do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so it says here, we're going to be 38 through 42. It says, now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha. I'm going to read the 38 verse again. This is uh, Luke, the 10th chapter, verse 38 through 42. And it says, now it came to pass. Amen. Praise God. Everything all right? Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Now it came to pass. Amen. We welcome you back in. Amen. Now it came to pass. We're in Luke 10 and 38. It says, Now it came to pass as they as they went that he entered into a certain village. And a certain woman whose name was Martha. Now, some of y'all would say, I know exactly who that is. Amen. And Martha received him into her house. Mark received who? Him. Who's the him? Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the focal, focused person that we're talking about today. And the message that we're titled today is, I looked on Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're talking about the women that went out of their way, amen, whether to make a meal, whether to put Jesus up in the room. Amen. They did it to all the prophets, all the apostles, whoever was traveling, or evangelists. When they came to the city, and they needed a place to stay. They prepared a room for them. They made a bed for them. And they made a meal for them. And they also made sure their clothes were clean. How did they, they didn't have dry cleaners, so they washed them. Praise the Lord. Whatever they could do to make the, the, the natural part easy for the man and woman of God. Hallelujah. And so here we're talking about Jesus. Hallelujah. In 38, I'm reading it again. It says, now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village. Hallelujah. And it says a certain woman, not only a certain village, but a certain woman. In other words, the name was not important of the city, and then, but the name of the woman was. Amen. Because these people had money. We're talking about Martha and Mary. And they are the sisters of who? Lazarus. Lazarus. Amen. Lazarus was a rich man. Amen. So that's why it's considered a certain, a certain city, a certain village. Amen. A certain woman. Named Martha, received him into her house, amen. And she had a sister called Mary. And we're talking about Martha right now. It says, which also sat at Jesus' feet. Mary sat at Jesus' feet. Mary, I'm gonna say that again. Mary sat at Jesus' feet. Now it doesn't say Martha sat at Jesus' feet, but it says Mary sat at Jesus' feet. And what they want you to know is that there was a difference between Martha and Mary. Even though they both loved Jesus, uh -huh. a 
let me just read on and we'll, we'll get to the point here. It says, but Martha was comforted about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, does thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? It bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. In other words, Martha, leave her alone. Amen. You, you, you're just busy about other things and matters and stuff. And Jesus goes on, but one thing is needful. And Mary had chosen the good part. Hallelujah. That's why I'm hooked on Jesus. Mary showed us. Amen. We got to stay at his feet. It's at the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. That you find deliverance. It's at the feet of Jesus. That you find your blessings met. You find your needs met. It's at the feet of Jesus. Of course. 
married. We'll get there in a minute. Huh? But this one is called an adultery. Huh? It's another woman. They don't give her name. In the book of John, the eighth chapter, huh? hey, verses 1 through 11, huh? glory, they don't give her a name. Huh? She's a woman considered of the night. Huh? It says, and the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. Huh? And when they had seen, when they had set her in the midst, huh? they said unto her, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Huh? Now Moses in the law commanded us, huh? I don't know, uh, they threw out there. Amen. Amen. The very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to have to accuse him. But Jesus stopped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he had heard them not. As though he had heard them not. Now get this. Jesus ain't dumb the first, second, or third. He's not slow the first. But when Jesus said nothing, you ever heard that called, uh, old people call it, uh, when you don't hear selective hearing? No. <laughs> Jesus was using selective hearing. Selective hearing. Oh, Chanel. Oh, Rita. Because this was one of his women. Hallelujah. When you are considered one of Jesus' women, he'll fight for you. All right. All right. He'll fight for you. Yes, he, will. he fights for his women. Mm -hmm. bless y'all. He fights for his women. Yes, yes. Amen. But Jesus stooped. It says, this day he said, tempting him. Wait, let me go up. I missed this. Now Moses, Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. Mm -hmm. But what sayest thou in John 8, 1 through 11? Mm -hmm. This they said, tempting him, mm -hmm. that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus, being all wise, all knowing, yes. he stoops down. Yes. And with his finger, he wrote on the ground. Mm -hmm. I love this. Oh, yeah. I want to take my time with this because Hallelujah. One time God gave me a message. I never got a chance of preaching yet. But the message he gave me was, is there any more blood left for me? Is there any more blood left for me? Well, you know, Lord, because I asked this question because I cut up on Sunday. I cut up on Tuesday. I cut up on Wednesday and I cut it up on Thursday. I cut up on Friday, Saturday, and back again on Sunday. So is there any more blood? Right. Oh, God. Yes, all right, all right. Who washed away my sins? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What could wash away my sins? Nothing, Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. What can make me whole again? Nothing but, Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. So like this woman, many of us here are like this woman. I'm like this woman. He said, I got this. Don't ask a woman. Don't ask a word. Because they were about to stone her to death. Yes. He's like, I got this. This they said, tempted him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger, he wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Yes. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself. Jesus said, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm standing, I'm good, I'm good. He said, I cover mine, I watch after mine, I take care of mine. He said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone at her. Hallelujah. Let him that's without sin. Thank you, God. Cast the first stone. Now, you all know the story. Was there one? Was there one stone thrown? None. So when they had continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. 49 verse says, And they that said at me began to say within themselves, Who? 
is this, that forgiveth sins also. And he said unto the woman, thy faith has saved thee. Yeah. Go in peace. Yes, Lord. Yes, thank you. He said, thy faith has saved thee. Thank Go in peace. Now look at this. She just came out of the act. I don't know what kind of faith she had, but she had enough. <laughs> she had supernatural faith, okay? Yes, Lord. He said, hey, Amen. He said, unto the woman, thy faith has saved thee. Yes. Go in peace. I don't hold nothing against you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't have nothing against you. The 11 verse. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Let me go to the 11 verse, Brandon. Okay, we'll go to the 10. So when Jesus lifted himself up and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Has no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Thank you. Yes, Lord. I wipe this lake clean. That's Jesus said, I already wiped. This lay clean. Hallelujah. Nothing against you. Nothing against you. Hallelujah. Go to the wrong page. So y'all forget it. Amen. Amen. So over another context. Amen. I lost my place. Amen. But down 49. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Here it is. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So there's another Mary. Amen. Of Bethany. Luke 10. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Luke the 10th chapter. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name. All right. <clears throat> 10 and 38. Okay, there we go. Amen. 10 38. So it says here, now it came to pass as they went, it was just about Martha, but now we're, we're not looking, we, we, we've covered that already, we're talking about Mary and Martha, mm -hmm. that was the other Mary, but then there's the other Mary, the same Mary that we just talked about was the second Mary that also washed the feet of Jesus. This is what I'm going to go to, 12, John 12, I'm sorry, John 12, because there's a lot of Marys, I'm sorry, <laughs> that's a lot of Marys. Mary of Bethany, that's the, that's the sister of Martha. There's Mary, the mother of Jesus, and then there's Mary Magdalene. So this is the one we're going to, Mary the Magdalene. Now, they both had the anointing of Spignard. Mary of Bethany had the, the ointment of Spignard. More, it takes, they said it takes, I think, a week's salary to afford a bottle of Spignard. Just like I get a bottle of anointing oil, totally full to the top, but a much bigger than that, a bigger one would be like this one, but even much bigger than this, Big, bigger than that, probably about, I'll say, I know it's wrong, but not <laughs> big like this probably, it was a very large bottle of stick knife, and, they would, and that's what she used to anoint the feet of Jesus, 12 and 1 through 8. And it says, then Jesus, six days before the Passover. Now that let you know that it's close to the time. Mm -hmm. Six days before the time, before the Passover. Came to Bethany, where, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, and whom he raised from the dead. There they made a supper and married served him. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at a table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment and sprinkled it very costly, anointed the feet of Jesus, wiped him with her hair. I think I did cover this part already. Yes. Yeah. Yep, so then we're going over to, did I say, let me go one moment. All right. Yes, here it is. Amen. 49. Let me go to that 49 verse. Let me double check. Um, that's not it. I'm looking for a mirror. Okay, let me see. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Let's go to Mark 15. I'll come to that in just a minute. I was doing a big study today. Amen. On the Marys. Just let me go there. Mark, oh yeah, Mark 15, I'm sorry. Thank you, God. Nevertheless, there's a lot of Marys. And out of all of them, all of them, there was only two of them that anointed the seed of Jesus. Did we bring everything in? Mark 15. I appreciate y'all help. Amen. 15 and 41. 15 and 40, rather. We'll go to the 40th verse. It says here, 15 and 40. There were also women. Now, this is during the time of Jesus Christ was being crucified. Afar off among them was Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James. The the less and of jo Joseph and Salomon, who also when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered unto him. All these women, they only not only did these things for Jesus, but they followed Jesus and ministered unto Jesus. With him unto Jerusalem. That was wherever Jesus went, so went the women of God. And then over in the book of Luke, the 23rd chapter. Luke, the 23rd. And if you find that one with Jesus being ministered with oil by Mary Magdalene, holler it out. Because right now I over, I over typed. 23 and 49. It says, and all his acquaintance and the women that followed him from Galilee stood afar off, mm -hmm. beholding these things. The women of God never left Jesus' side. Yes, yes. I'm going to go to John 19. So when you get discouraged, you don't think nobody's looking, just remember that Jesus is right there. Yes. Yes. He's got our back. I received this message on last night. The Lord said, this is definitely what I need you to teach today. Because it's going to come a time when we might feel lonely. It's going to come a time when we're going to feel like nobody's got our back. But Jesus, okay. he never changes. John 19, 25 says, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, there's the first Mary, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas. And then there's Mary Magdalene. Mm -hmm. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. He's going to disciple. In other words, the same mother I had, and she's good for me, John, she's good for you. Hallelujah. This is now your mother, John, this is your mother, and John, okay, and, and, and Mary, this is your new son, John. Hallelujah. In other words, he was telling her, take her to your home and take care of her like I did. Hallelujah. Be a son to Mary, and Mary be a mother to John. That's why I do you not know in the body of Christ, who is your mother? Who is your brother? Right. Who's your sister? You might have 10 sisters and brothers at home, but in the body of Christ, right. what supersedes that? When I do anything for the people and women of God in the body of Christ, I call them mother. I call them brother. And I call them sister. Because this is now our family. Mm -hmm. You have family at home, but your body of Christ family, you see about. Mm -hmm. If you got something going on, I got to see about you, Dr. Nolan. Yes. Dr. Tyler. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bueller, you come closer. <laughs> you know, sometimes it takes a while. 
come close to feel like you're a part. Mm -hmm. Just be willing. Just go. Yes. Jesus will never, he'll never leave. Mm -hmm. He got your back. Amen. So I just want to, so we went to 27, Matthew 27. I think we read that 55. Amen. Hallelujah. And I just want more scripture. Hold on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his holy name. Bless your holy name, Jesus. Lord, you, O oh God, are worthy. You, O oh God, are worthy. Hallelujah. When I was a young girl, even 10 years old, I asked the Lord to be my father. He told me he'd be my father. Even though we had stepfathers, it's not the same. Mm -hmm. They just are somebody that you can see with your natural eyes, but they're not the same as your real father. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. So God began to, <clears throat> God began to show me who my real father is. Hallelujah. And Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, he is my real father. Let's go over to Mark 14 and 3. Mark, oh, okay, John 12 and 3. Okay, Mark 12 and 3. Let's go there. John 12 and 3. Let's go there. I got two scriptures. Let's go to John 12 and 3. I think this is the one I was looking for. <clears throat> I did that one too. Okay, then I know that's okay. That's Mary the Martha, Mary the sister of Martha. Okay, then let's go over to hold on. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was just there a minute ago. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Matthew 26. Matthew 26. <clears throat> And seven. Matthew 26 and 7. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Got to get this out. Hallelujah. 26 and 7. Now, when Jesus was in Bethany, look at that's Bethany again. Hallelujah. Let me just read that. There came, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he had sat at me. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath brought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, wherever, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman have done, be told for a memorial of her. Amen. And I believe that's the same Mary. But let me go further. Hallelujah. For Mark 14 and 3. Mark 14 and 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus takes care of this woman. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 14 and 3. It says, and, and again it says, at Bethany. So this is again, let me know this is the same, but I'm going to read it again. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he said at me, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment, and was spignar, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there was some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against him. One more time. Just one more time, guys. Hold on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we went to John 12. Let me go to... Luke 7 and 37. Luke 7. 
the 737. Thank you, God. This is the one I'm looking for. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 36 verse, 736. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. So he's at a Pharisee's house. It's not a house that's considered sanctified or separated or different. It's, it's a house that's a sinner's considered, well, not sinners, but it's not the house where he's usually in the house of. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat meat. Right. This is the house of a lot of judgment. Because the Pharisees like to debate. And behold, a woman in the city, just a woman of the city, which was a sinner. When she knew that Jesus sat at me in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And stood at his feet behind him. She stood at his feet, at Jesus' feet. <laughs> behind him. She stood behind him because she had the enough sense and trust to know that he would not shame her, he would not humiliate her, he would not disown her, but he would love her and approve of her. So she stood behind him weeping. She, it says behind his feet with tears. And did wipe them with the hairs of her head. And kissed his feet and anointed them with the anointment. Hallelujah. Now, I can understand how Mary, the mother of, I mean, Mary, the sister of Martha, could afford a bottle of anointing oil because, after all, they were rich. But this woman of the night is another thing. I work hard for my money. <laughs> she worked hard for her money. And uh, she got a hold of that money. But this time she did it for a good cause. Hallelujah. It said, now when the Pharisees, which had been in him, saw it, they, he spake on, within himself, saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that, that touches him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee, and he saith, Master, say on. There was, and then he goes on and on. But in the end, when he says it to her, he dropped down to the 47th verse. Wherefore, he, oh, let me go to the 46th verse. Now, oh, the 45th verse. I gotta let you know Jesus. 44, please. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house, and thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she hath washed my feet with her tears. You see how you're supposed to do such description mm -hmm. with this woman? And she has wiped them with her hair, with the hair of her hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time that I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil, thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore, I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same love of little. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. That's it. And then he said, that, and that... And they, and they that sat at me with him began to say within themselves, who is this that forgiveth sins also? This is what they said to the Pharisees. They were jabbing, jabbing. He said, and he said to the woman, Jesus ain't done, thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Hallelujah. You may stand for communion. Who's at the cross at the Let me pray first. Father, forgive me. Lord, we are hooked on you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. You showed us times and times and countless times that you don't throw none of us away. And if I can, AKA, my second message, is there any more blood for me? There's plenty of blood running from Emmanuel's veins. Thank you for washing all our slates clean. 
And Father God, just like you forgave the woman, God, the, consider the woman of the night, you can forgive us. Yes. And so, Lord, we give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Yes, totally. it truly, is all thine. In yes. thy mighty, precious Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It was at the cross, at the cross, where that I first saw one. And the burdens get our hearts and mind ready for communion. Oh, oh, way. oh it was there by faith. I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Oh, it's at the cross, at the cross, that I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart they rolled away.
God, you know what's hidden in deep in my heart. God, if there's any iniquity, take it out. If there's hidden sin, God. Oh, God, if I transgress with knowing, Lord, take it out, God. And you forgive us, Lord, and we'll forgive me, Lord. And Lord, to forgive you, Lord, if there's anything in our heart, we ask you for forgiveness. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do we remember so we eat all of it. And after the same matter, he took the cup. When he had stuff saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as ye drink it in remembrance, in remembrance of me. Drink ye all of it. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It must not. Jesus' name, God bless. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.